Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to this coordinator's workshop. I'm Deepak Fatak. I run the T10KT project. With me on the dais is Professor Kannan Mavgalya, uh, today's chief guest for the inaugural function. He also happens to be the overall coordinator of all national mission projects that are being conducted at IIT, and an important contributor to the mission ideology and mission plans. First of all, let me welcome you wholeheartedly. To begin with, let me identify, as is my usual practice, uh, people coming from four corners of the country and, uh, and from the central part of the country, just as a starter. So let's start from north. Uh, anybody from Jammu and Kashmir? Ah, good, two of them, thank you. Uh, east, far east. Oh, you're also from Jammu and Kashmir? I see, good. North, east, east. One, two, three, four, five, good. Southernmost tip. Wow, several people. South is very strong in education, as can be seen by the number of students, as well as number of colleges and number of teachers. And from the west, anybody from Rajkot? Ah, oh, yeah. And, uh, Central India, Nagpur, and somewhere, somewhere, a lot of people. Okay, fine. It does not mean that the others should feel neglected. They are all uh, equally welcome. These are exciting times where the way teaching, learning has been happening traditionally is undergoing very rapid changes. It is in this changing scenario that we are holding this workshop. I will speak more about the nature of the workshop later. But I will begin by saying that it is the national mission undertaken by the Ministry of Human Resource Development which has been helping us conduct all these workshops for training teachers on large scale. Some of you would remember who were partners with us years ago when we started the distance education. There were only four or five centers uh, connected through VSATs. Subsequently, we migrated to AVU, uh, the tool developed by Amruta University, uh, and used it uh, to connect to 30 to 40 remote centers when we were training 1,000 teachers training workshops. Anybody here who has attended a workshop from those 1,000 teachers uh, training time? Ah, you are a perpetual uh, presence in these workshops. It's good. OK, fine. Thank you. Uh, we then decided to scale up in 2012. Actually, we submitted a plan to scale it up to training 10,000 teachers at a time. As many of you would know, this is a very uh, unique project in the world. Nowhere else 10,000 teachers are being trained simultaneously in any subject in a focused fashion. And we are happy to uh, report that the feedback so far has been good. We are further changing that model, and I will explain that model of the main workshop later. So we must all thank the MHRD and the National Mission for giving us this opportunity to help a large number of our colleagues to do their teaching job better so that students do their learning job better. It is in this context that I invited Professor Kannan Madhgalya. Before inviting him to speak to you in his inaugural address, let me very briefly introduce him. Uh, he is a originally a chemical engineer. I use the word originally by design because he hardly does anything related to chemical engineering these days. Uh, he's a product of IIT Madras. He then went to Rice University to do his PhD, but curiously he shifted to electrical sciences there and developed tremendous interest in signals and controls. And ever since he has joined as a faculty member decades ago, he has been teaching process control. He has written a book on uh, digital controls and so on. Uh, when the national mission started, he was one of the early contributors to the mission planning and the project uh, execution. Uh, thanks to his initiative, uh, he convinced many of us to join in the national mission projects. 
and the largest number of national mission projects being executed, both in terms of quantum of projects and in terms of quantum of funds that are being utilized for the benefit of the national education system, IIT Bombay is a leading institution today, thanks to his efforts. He is also the first person in IIT to try the flipped classroom model. He has been using it for last five years for his course. He initially tried to use the clickers that we had developed under one mission project here, teacher's training program project. And subsequently, he now uses Akash tablets to regularly conduct three to four quizzes in every flipped classroom that he conducts. So he's a stalwart in modernizing the education system and his ambition and passion is that the maximum utilization of ICT in the most appropriate fashion should be done, such that quality education can be imported to a very large number of students. As you know, 1.25 million students join engineering education every year in this country. And I'm not even talking about a large number of, much larger number of students who join arts, commerce, science, and other streams. And they all deserve good education. Like many of us got good education, they all deserve good education. And it is towards this end that all our efforts under his coordinatorship are being undertaken. So without further ado, let me request Professor Kannan Nautgalia to give his inaugural talk. So I'm going to talk to you about, um, first of all, welcome to IIT Bombay. And I believe that you have already done one week of uh, um, this work from your own college. And we are delighted that you could all come. This is the outline of my talk today. Um, I will first uh, briefly give an overview of the National Mission on Education through ICT. It is also known as NME ICT. Then I will uh, briefly describe the major e-content projects that are happening uh, through NME ICT in various parts of the country. Then the NME ICT projects at IIT Bombay. And finally, the projects that I'm handling. So NME ICT project uh, mission, as you recall, NME ICT is National Mission on Education through ICT. It started in February 2009 with uh, 4,612 crore outlay. You may wonder, what is this odd number? Uh, it is based on the exchange rate on that day. So it was a $1 billion project. One of the few countries to embark on such a major initiative in the world. 60% of the mon money was allocated for connectivity to provide one GBPS bandwidth for every one of 400 universities that existed at that time and to their affiliating colleges. And uh, in fact, the connectivity is more or less complete. And most of the balance money, because I said 60% here for connectivity, the balance is uh, about 40%. I'm saying most of it, it is for e-content generation. Uh, I say most of it because a small amount was reserved also for spent also on the Akash project. In the rest of my talk, I will explain this e-content generation. By the way, this project, namely train 10,000 teachers, is also coming from this e-content generation. Okay. Briefly, the administration of NME ICT, there is a project approval board. Well, there is actually an APEX committee that meets uh, maybe once or twice a year. Project approval board meets more often. It's a project approval board that uh, gives the final recommendation of final approval for funds. There is a standing committee that reviews the submitted projects and uh, recommends for funding. The mission directors, uh, NME ICT is really lucky to have had uh, an excellent mission director in uh, Mr. N.K. Sinha. And we have another equally excellent mission director in Sri Praveen Prakash, who is now um, aggressively pushing this. OK, the website of this mission is sakshat.ac.in. 
Okay, a few major projects of NMEICT, the country over, all over the country. You all know about NPTEL, so I will not uh, talk much about it. Virtual Labs, it is being uh, coordinated by IIT Delhi, Professor Ranjan Bose is the coordinator, and uh, uh, many IITs and a uh, few other institutions, about 10 institutions are members of this. These, um, the fruits of their work are available at, I think, vlab.co.in. That is the URL. If you just do a virtual labs, NME ICT, uh, you, will do a, you will locate this. The objective is to complement the theory projects of NPTEL. And uh, this virtual labs uh, project has two components. One is the simulation type. The other one is remote trigger type. The remote trigger type, you can actually carry out experiments on a real plant that may be in uh, one, maybe in one corner of the country. Pedagogy project is uh, coordinated by Professor A.K. Ray of IIT Karakpur, and um, it is to uh, monitor, it is to come up with methods for creating content. How it is known as outcome-based learning, outcome-based education. By the way, it is possible to spend one hour on each of these, so I'm just mentioning and m moving along. Akash project, Professor uh, Fatak is the, the PI of this Akash project, so I help him with uh, uh, you know, Linux uh, application, uh, Linux-based application development for Akash. Uh, I have only one small demo because uh, it will take a lot of time to give the demo itself. What I will do is I have this um, uh, Akash running in um, Linux. You can see the Ubuntu desktop. We have Ubuntu 12.10 running. I have two smart engineers here. One is Srikant, the other is Sachin. Uh, both of them have done this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this uh, small uh, embedded system to this. This is an embedded system. Uh, it is a, it's a knockdown version of Arduino. We developed it at IIT Bombay, so we call it Anudino. Okay, Anu because it's very small. It's um, the total cost of this is about uh, 90 rupees. Let me see if there is no loose contact. Um, okay, what I will do is, let me just um, keep fiddling around with this. Looks like there is some uh, loose contact. It is supposed to measure the room temperature. If things go well, it will come on here. I'll show it to you. Okay, so what we will do is, if you have any questions, um, we can answer them at the uh, end of my talk. And hopefully before that, I'll be able to show this. Then I will also um, discuss other IIT Bombay's projects. Okay, Akash is one of the projects being funded by NMEICT and being coordinated from IIT Bombay. Um, what are the NMEICT projects at IIT Bombay? First one is Akash project. Now you know that um, the, the previous phase of Akash is over and in fact it was considered a success and now we have gone for uh, DGS and D uh, tendering. Hopefully, we will have some private players, uh, maybe three or four people, who will offer Akash compatible projects, uh, Akash compatible tablets that every one of you can go and buy yourself. By the way, this one uh, has started working. You can see the, it is measuring the temperature. Uh, you may not be able to see the lettering here. But you can see the red dots. The red dots are the temperature um, values that are, those are, that are procured online. And right now the temperature is in the room is about 23, 24, around that. At, at least that's what this um, sensor says. It has a small LM35 sensor at the back of this that costs about 10 rupees. But the whole thing is about 90 rupees. Okay, there are many things. Um, Linux runs, so entire Linux, whatever is available on Linux, 
will run on this. Okay, the next project is train 1,000 or 10,000 teacher uh, workshop. Uh, this you are already familiar with. You are going through that. E Kalpa is um, a project uh, that is to make available design um, instructional material. It is being done by uh, IDC at IIT Mabe, led by Professor Ravi Puvaya. Um, NID and uh, IIT Gauhati are members of this. E-Antra is uh, being done by my colleague, Professor Kavi Arya in Computer Science Department. Uh, this is to, um, this project provides robotic training uh, to the country. To the students, there are many remote centers that are happening and um, I think they are going to create 500 labs in the next uh, three years or so. Okay, to provide robotic training. So it is typically done by um, groups of uh, IT, CS people, electronics, electrical electronics, telecommunication people, and maybe mechanical engineers. Um, spoken tutorial is uh, one of the projects uh, that I'm leading. I want to spend a few minutes on that. FOSI is another project uh, that I'm part of. Um, this is for spreading open source software. And finally, uh, Oscar, Project Oscar, in fact, uh, the PA of this project is uh, Professor Sridhar Iyer, who is one of uh, your instructors for this program. Okay, so how many of you are familiar with uh, spoken tutorials? Okay, there are quite a few people. Okay, thank you. So what I will do is, I will briefly uh, demonstrate uh, this spoken tutorial with what is uh, with a method that we developed. In fact, I have coined it as the side by side method. Let me go to spoken tutorial website. This is how the main page is. There is a lot of information. We will not spend time on this. But if you see here video search, it will take you to the videos there. And then you can select your category. For example, let me select Scilab. Scilab is a great open source alternative to MATLAB. I have selected English. Then look at tutorial. By the way, dubbing is available in many languages. So I'm going to click this vector operations. OK. So let me play this. Uh, I need a sound uh, output. So what I do is I carry a small speaker. That's a radio. I think now it is. So what I will do is I'm going to explain a method called side-by-side uh, -side learning method, which is uh, something we uh, promoted, we created, we invented, and then we are making available. We want people to use this. So look at the tutorial, which is created for self-learning. You would have seen that we have a lot of FOSS topics. FOSS stands for free and open source software lot of topics, and then videos in several languages, and each one about 10 minutes. Sequence of them, you have to learn in a particular order, and these are created for self-learning, so that the students can learn even without any teacher being present, even without a domain expert being present. A student can say, I want to learn PHP, they can learn on their own without a domain expert. So we suggest that this be done through what is known as a side-by-side -side method. So let me play this. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vector operation. So let me advance it to the place that I want to demonstrate. Using spaces as P is equal to open square bracket, one space, two space, three, close the square bracket and press enter. Okay, so this uh, here, the narrator, says how a vector has to be created. So I do the same thing here. I come here and I say P equals 1, 2, 3, and then I see the same results. So this is the side-by-side -side method. You listen to a command, pause the video, and practice simultaneously. And if it doesn't work, rewind, listen to it again, and do it. And because these tutorials are created for self-learning, we put in a lot of effort to do that. I don't want to explain how that works, because that will take about 20 minutes to explain, okay? 
So because it is created for self-learning, this is possible. And because we restrict ourselves only to open source software, every student can download the software and practice them side by side. Right? Of course, if a student becomes good, he or she can even type as they listen to it. For example, let me do the next one. Or by using commas as Q is equal to open square bracket 2 comma 3 comma 4 close the square bracket and press enter. See that? You can listen to it once you become good. Listen to it, they go very slowly. You can actually practice. So you can learn PHP, you can learn Python, you can learn LaTeX, you can learn C, C++, Java, all kinds of things. It is in fact possible for you to train all your students and say, let every one of my students become good in C, C++, Java. So let them, let, I will get at least IT jobs to all my students in my college. Not only IT, CS, but mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, everyone, even arts and science. Not impossible. Is that okay? You don't need a teacher. The students, at least for, these are skill based. It may not be possible to teach algorithms using this. It may not be possible to teach relativity through electromagnetism and so on, but you can do this. Okay, so I will move on to the next topic that I had. Um, spoken tutorials I already talked about. FOSSE stands for Free and Open Source Software in Education. Uh, we have a group of about 10 faculty members who are actively participating in this. Now, why is uh, FOSS important? Okay, why is FOSS important? So the answer is in the next slide. Um, commercial software, by, by the way, this is the somewhat crowded slide, but this is the last slide. Commercial software is uh, expensive. Um, most of our students, of course, don't seem to realize this. Heavy penalties if unauthorized software is used by industry. I have an example. Uh, an Italian multinational company used, uh, rather there was a raid in, in an Italian multinational company. During the raid, they located one and only one illegal copy of Microsoft Office. The whole company, there was only one illegal copy of some software, that was Microsoft Office. But Microsoft got very angry. It was going to file a court case. And uh, they arrived at an out-of-court settlement. The out-of-court settle out settlement was that this Italian multinational company should count all the machines, all the computers it had all over it, all in all the branches all over the world. Its offices in Rome, Italy, Europe, all over the world. Count the total number of machines and multiply by per copy cost of Microsoft Office. And that should be given as damages. So this company paid $20 million as damages to Microsoft for having used one and only one illegal copy of Microsoft Office. Okay? So it is expensive. So another, um, I was teaching control system design for students who are pursuing embedded systems course at IIT Bombay. It's an MTech PhD level embedded systems course taught by Professor Kriti Ramamritam and Kavi Arya. And I taught the control systems part of it. And then I asked the students, how many of them had used Scilab? Scilab is a MATLAB equivalent, but absolutely open source. It uses, it is, it has similar kind of capabilities. But unfortunately, out of 25 students in the class, only one student raised his hand saying that he had used Scilab. I got angry, I scolded him, why did he use Scilab? You should have also used MATLAB like everybody else. Then he explained why he used MATLAB, why he used Scilab. He said he was working for an embedded systems company after BTEC. And then it was a startup for five people company. And then their annual turnover itself 
would have been about 2 crore this comp he wanted to use matlab in that company so his boss told him matlab would be too expensive for them and um, so i have a question by the way this is an embedded systems company right so that means they have to create that embedded they have to create that software they have to burn that software into the chip and distribute that so you need you know complete rights to do whatever you want so how much do you think this ceo told our engineer that cost of matlab for them would be i want you to take a guess what is the cost of matlab to that company take a guess why did he refuse the use of matlab in that company any guess how many of you have used matlab okay quite a few have used okay all right no guess take a guess yeah yeah whatever whatever is required for the embedded system you take a guess 20 lakhs okay any more sorry 5 lakh 5 lakh 20 lakh you're going in the wrong direction <laughs> okay he was his boss told him a copy of matlab would cost 2 crore a copy of matlab to the company would cost 2 crore he said use assembly use c use java use basic whatever but if you insist on matlab please resign and go we don't want you this fellow found out that scilab could do similar things he started using scilab okay we pro people uh, so the moment i heard the story i banned the use of matlab in my class until that time i would say any software is okay i don't care after this i said if you submit your assignment in matlab i'm going to give you zero mark why my ts don't have matlab how do i evaluate it okay so some students didn't like me but i want to be responsible for the society okay so um hindustan lever has only one matlab copy A anybody who wants to use matlab should come at 7:30 in the morning and occupy that chair nobody else can use matlab on that day wipro has one copy of matlab so that is networked you have to book your slot i want to use it from 4 to 7 pm next thursday if the slot is available you will get it okay i asked one wipro employee what would happen if somebody brought an illegal copy of matlab into the company he said three things he'll be fired he'll be put in jail and there'll be a court case why why how many computers does wipro have okay all right so uh, the fossi project aims at um, helping uh, these um, open source software so what I, for that i'm going to uh, show one feature that we have developed i'll uh, end this um, talk with a small demo we have what is known as a textbook companion because the documentation for fos is very poor sketchy so we said let's create documentation we have a shortage of quality manpower but we have lots of students can we use students to create documents okay well some people say yes actually our experience at iit bombay is not very good our students are good in programming but you ask them to document they are not going to do that so we said that we will solve the inverse problem ask the students to create code for existing documents okay so we said go to the standard textbook look at look at only the solved problems for every one of the solved problems give the code okay if i run the code i should get the answer so we made this available on um, on the cloud so this is garuda cloud that runs from uh, uh, bangalore i'm executing 4 plus 2 and uh, it goes to uh, bangalore it computes and says answer is 6 you can actually do any of the scilab computations here 
That means all you need is a browser. But on this, we made the textbook companions available. Okay, I have uh, several uh, subjects. So let me demonstrate it. Should I take on one on signal processing? You're familiar with any of these topics? Yeah, computer programming, actually Scilab is not very good. In fact, we have a parallel thing called, uh, you know, Python, we are actually doing that. So if I do a demo on Python, then we can demonstrate. But let's take some other, shall I take signal processing? If not, I'll take uh, my subject, if you're not interested. So let me take uh, control theory, and I'm going to take frequency domain analysis. See that for every one of them, there is an option. So frequency domain analysis in the book has, you know, some 10 uh, different examples. Let me take this body plot. Some of you may recall uh, doing such a thing when you were an undergraduate student. So here is the code for this example 9.15 in the book by BCCO. So if I execute, it will execute, it will display the result. I can go change it, modify it get the result and so on, right? And we have a total of 300 such textbook companions already available. By the way, result has come, okay? And this is a, it has created body plot, but you can also see some calculations, gain margin, paste margin, and so on. So for 300 books, we already have this. And another 300 books are in pipeline. The same thing is happening for Python, OSCAD, which is a circuit design software, open form, computation fluid dynamic software, and so on. So uh, lots of activities are happening. Uh, so FOSI is the other project that we are working on. So with this, um, I think I have already exceeded the time. So I would like to thank you. Um, NME ICT's goal is to make available education to everybody. Education to everybody in fact, um, uh, I would, you know, I would say that you take any school in the country, any school anywhere in the country, whether it is a village or a metropolitan city, at least 10% of the students would have done extremely well anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Okay, I say 10%, in some places it could be 7%, some other place it could be 12%, and so on, on an average 10%, okay? Now, these students are stuck, let's say, in a village because of economic conditions, family conditions, okay, they are not able to go to a good place, lack of teachers. If only we can empower these 10% of the children, we can do outstanding work, okay? India will become a developed country. But the difficult thing is, who are these 10% of the students? Are they the toppers in the class? Because we know that students who get 100% are failing in uh, universities, in colleges, right? So these are not necessarily the top 10% of the class, okay? So if only we empowered them, the real 10% would have risen. How do we provide this? How do we empower these children? So this, uh, one of the goals of NME ICT is to make available to Corporate bomb the whole country with things that are easily available. For example, Akash, the goal of Akash project is to give an Akash tablet to every child in the country. So when we say NPTEL courses, freely available, it's available to every student in the country, every student in every college, so the bright students, the students who thirst for knowledge can actually go and listen to them. Similarly, 10,000 teacher training program. It is transmitted free of cost. Anybody can participate. Spoken tutorials freely available. So the objective of this mission is to make it available to everybody, including the 10% out of whom we will have future Einsteins and so on, Ramanujans, Einsteins, and so on. Okay. So that is the ambition of this mission, and uh, I'm really really delighted that you could all uh, come, and through you, we would spread the goals. We would. Um, uh, try to achieve the objectives of our mission. Thank you.